here we are, third video. This time we're going to get down to brass tacks. And I'm going to end up with a map of what I think should be the next step on Mosaic's feet. If you'll recall, this is Mosaic. She's a young mare who was bought recently. She had been shod apparently all of her life, and when her shoes were taken off, had some abscessing, and has been off and on lame for quite a while. She's been under the care of a barefoot trimmer for about three months, and her feet have improved considerably, but they still have a little ways to go. If you recall, her feet look like this. This is her left front foot. This is the lateral view of her left front foot. This is a picture I used in a previous video where I imagined I could measure using a photograph and measure down what I guessed was one and an eighth inches and then drew a perpendicular line to the ground and notice that the line crossed the last spot where the hoof was sitting on the ground and also the spot where the hoof had tried to trim itself. And I want to reiterate that this measurement, quote measurement, was a pure guess on my part. And I'm going to talk to you about how to make this measurement when you have a real life horse. And before I do that, I'm going to talk about the hoof print trim, which a lot of people will refer to as a, quote, cookie cutter trim. That always makes me a little bit angry because it implies that, the, that we take a cookie cutter, a stationary cookie cutter, and put it on top of every single horse's foot. And we don't do that. Rather, we follow patterns that we see in nature. If you don't believe that nature works in patterns, I have a recommendation for you. It's on this website, on the YouTube, and it's called Fibonacci Sequence. And it's about how a Fibonacci sequence of numbers is frequently followed in nature. It's a wonderful video. I recommend it highly. So, back to Mosaic's left front foot. You remember that in a previous video I created a 30 degree line and compared that line to the hairline on this foot. We discovered that right in this area here the foot had been pushed up by the heel which is first touching at this point and then rocking back and touching at that point. That right now is the lowest point of the heel. Remember we discussed that if you took all of this away, that heel would be no lower than it is right now. How do you know where to begin your cut? And how do you know how to bring the foot back to be directly under the horse's leg without making it too short? That's where the hoof print trim and some measurements come into play. This is a graphic actually drawn by Martha Olivo, who was my mentor when I first started trimming, of how to measure a baseline at the back of a horse's hoof. You begin by finding the hairline connection. What that means is it's not the end of the hair. It's where the hair grows out of the skin. You take that measurement directly below the coronary groove. That's where the arrows are pointing. You mark that and then you measure up one and one eighth inches for a normal horse and the the measurements will vary depending upon the size of the horse but we're going to use a normal horse here that is the place where you mark a baseline that baseline is the line upon which everything else will be based the baseline is that area of the hoof where nothing can change all of the structures come together there. They're all tied together there. Because they're all tied together, they cannot move. It's very important you understand how to make this important measurement. You start at the base of the hairline and you in fact drop a perpendicular to the ground. You do not measure along the heel itself. If all you have is a ruler, you stand the ruler up and sight across it to that point on the heel that shows one and an eighth inches. If you measure along this plane, the measurement will be incorrect. You must measure at a 90 degree angle to the bearing surface of the hoof. The hoof print trim book comes with a built-in gauge that makes it almost impossible to screw up this measurement. So I'll just let those of you who want to pursue this further do that on your own. All right, so we're back to Mosaic's left front foot. A couple of things to notice here. There is an area here where the tubules are splitting. That probably indicates some infection. 
I also noticed some bruising here, and we remember we saw a lot of bruising on the side of this hoof also. I've put a line parallel to the ground. You'll see that the hairline does look like it droops a bit. The hoof looks pretty consistently coned. I don't see one side more flared than the other. And that should be reflected when we turn the hoof over and look at the underside. And we can see that that is pretty consistent. And what I've done is I have placed a baseline on this hoof. And again, I've guessed it might be lower, like right there because I see a bit of a change in color. I see a periopal tag there. But what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to go to the widest part of the frog. That's one of the hints that you can use. You can also use these little tags of periopal. The only way you can act actually establish this baseline is to measure and then look at all the other signs. The reason I measure is not necessarily to take the heels to that measurement. But I do know that I don't want to take the heels any lower than that measurement. And what I see in this foot now is the fact that even though it's been trimmed, the heels are still quite a bit above the baseline. To my way of thinking, they should probably be taken down a little bit more. And what will happen if that occurs is that you can see that this line is a bit slanted. And if this line here is the top of the hoof. If you took down that hoof to there, do you see that the heel itself would come back? And if you took it down to there, you would see that the heel would come back even further. And if you took it all the way down, you would see that the heel, which ended up being right here, would actually come back to here. And the same thing would happen here. Now, the difference I see in these two heels is this bar is proceeding in a relatively straight line, but it's leaning. This bar is standing straight up, but it's bending. You can see that what's happened right here is that it's run into the end of its roots. And because the heel is being pushed forward by the bending tubule, the wall here is beginning to buckle instead of come straight. And all of this has to be taken care of. But before we do that, let's put the hoof print ring onto this hoof. Okay, I've placed the ring on the hoof where I think it goes. I've been conservative. I've got the baseline pretty far forward. I've got the edges of the circle where it turns, which would be the fulcrum of the hoof, a little bit over the white line at the sides. What I've ended up with is all of this toe area. This is the footprint, the, the print of all the internal structures in the hoof. You can't chop the hoof off here because then there would be no room for the wall to grow in. So I'm going to put another circle, only this time it's an oval, on this hoof to show you about where I think you're going to uh, just push that out a bit. So what I think is going to happen is this toe is this much too long. And this part of the toe should be taken off with your nippers or with your rasp at a 90 degree angle. What you've left here is room for the wall to grow in. Because this line here is right where the white line actually has left the coffin bone. And if the toe were not flared, pulled forward, that's where the white line would be. And I suspect that it is there, and this stuff here is just covering it. There is your trim of the toe. I would also take this wall down and take this wall down. Where the hoof has trimmed itself is where that hoof wants to be. Now, once you get the toe off, and once you get these heels back to where they belong, and once you take this wall off, is you're going to work on the bars. And we'll save that for a video later. The last thing you're going to do on this toe trim is to address this area between the two lines. Remember that your toe is now gone at a 90 degree angle and this area is left flat. You don't want that area to be flat because you want to move the breakover back to here. So what you do is you're going to rasp this area from 10 to 2 with your rasp at about a 12 degree angle. 
to help you decide what a 12 degree angle is, just take your hand and lie it flat on the surface of the sole with your thumb laying across the frog. Then lay your rasp with its tip at the edge of the toe and, and lying across your thumb as it sits on top of the frog. That's the angle that the rasp should take when you do this rasping right here at the toe. Don't erase this line that you've drawn. Just rasp this area away so that it is off the ground when the hoof print is on the ground. In the next video in our series, we'll take care of the right front foot, just as we did the left front foot, and then we'll address the bars in both these hooves.